This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And in this episode, he's going to be taking a look at the bizarre guerrilla warfare weaponry found in Far Cry 6. This is one of the worst ideas I, I think I've ever seen. It's some sort of rocket weapon, and they've been mounted in some sort of backpack frame, and it looks like it's a lot of fun. If you want to see more of Jonathan's take on the Far Cry franchise, you can check out our episode on Far Cry 2. And if there are any other games, guns and mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this series, please make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. I somehow think of the FNFAL, or the FAL if you prefer that, as quite a Far Cry weapon, which is weird because I've never played Far Cry 2, and apparently that was the last time we saw it. For me, it, it does feel like a an insurgency type scenario kind of a rifle. Still around all over the world, it's a 1950s design as I'm sure a lot of you know. This is actually approximately the configuration that's shown in the game, uh, albeit this one has a top cover mount optical sight on it and what I'm actually holding here is the German G1 which is the abortive attempt by the Germans to adopt the Belgian 7.62 FAL. As to how it's depicted in the game, kind of as you'd expect, all I'll say is that the, the recoil seems to be too low. Famously, the, this and the G3 are really quite brutal to control and is only really useful for very close quarters. You'd be using this in semi-automatic but always nice to see and the FAL, it's a bit of a classic. Oh my good god, pausing. Good grief. The aptly named Humidora, because it really does look like a cigar box. That is horrific. It's the only word I can use for it. It's creative, I'll, I'll give them that. I can't really endorse it. <laughs> I've just noticed in the description for this thing that it includes a rate of fire. 150 rounds per minute, however way you cut it, seems really quite high. I assume that's based on some of these cowboy action shooter guys who can absolutely hammer a lever like you wouldn't believe. But as this thing doesn't have a buttstock, you lack the support to really kind of cane that, that lever. They generally modify the levers on those things, at least to cushion your knuckles from the, from the hard steel of the lever with some sort of wrap. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of guys catch fire here, and it seems that the uh, cigar-themed shotgun sets things on fire. There's a thematic um, relevance there, although <laughs> it's still a little perplexing, but um, you know, we have got incendiary shotgun rounds in, in, that exist. The famously Dragon's Breath that, that almost acts like a sort of flamethrower out of the muzzle. They really have gone quite fantasy with this instalment, but I don't think that's a new thing with the Far Cry fan franchise. This one is really interesting, and I will be honest here and admit that I did not know about this rifle. In fact, if I hadn't cheated and looked it up, I would have said, that's a fictionalized version of an Accuracy International rifle. It's not. It is absolutely correct. Um, we haven't obviously got one, because I don't know what it is, or didn't know what it is. Um, now I do. So this is um, in the real world called the Alejandro, developed by, I think, the Cuban state design and manufacturing capability. In 792 by 57 Mauser, which is a very interesting choice, otherwise it looks like the photos that I can find <laughs> of this thing, which looks very much like a 1980s, 90s vintage AI rifle with a weird sort of extra loop in the trigger guard, which I think is just a stylistic flourish. Can't speak to its capabilities. The barrel looks a little slender for a modern precision rifle, but it looks like the Far Cry guys have done a good job modeling it, presumably based on the same few images that I've been able to find. The scope in the game, absolutely bizarre. The reticle looks like, almost like an emoji or something. Wouldn't be very useful for pre precise aiming. And the bizarre kind of towing shackle on the top of the scope. No idea what that's supposed to be. I mean, I know firearms are able to do more these days with accessories and stuff, but I don't think towing small vehicles is among those abilities. The Stetchkin machine pistol, quite a good job, I think. And then we've then got a 
heavily decorated version with gold plate. I've got to say, the decora decorative firearms in this are well done. You know, you, you could make a real gun look like that. Whether you would and why you would want to are separate questions. Looks good. The stock, which is a real thing, it's got a holster stock like the old C96 Mauser, appears to be depicted as wood, which is a mistake. I don't think there's a wooden version. Easy mistake to make though, because it really does look like wood. But what it actually is, is that what's commonly termed Bakelite, not strictly Bakelite, but it is a related um, phenolic resin polymer, it does look rather a lot like wood. It has a sort of grain to it. Always seem, fit, reminds me of a sort of Mak Makarov on steroids that's also got an automatic function. But it is there is really not that much in common between the two. Just a sort of general... Um, Soviet family resemblance, helped I think by the, the shape and style and colour of the grips. But it, it's a very cool, um, now historic firearm. Wow, this thing is truly special. I almost don't know what to say about this. So we've got a as it says, an improvised compact disc launcher. I'm trying to think about this seriously, if we can. There's obviously very little mass in a CD. It's plastic, it's lightweight, easily broken. This thing would have to project it at kind of hypersonic speeds, I think, velocities, for it to do what we see there. In theory, if you shoot a CD hard enough, you can cut someone's head off with it. Um, I never thought I'd say those words, but I just have. It isn't just weaponized, this thing still plays music, which which I have to say is a nice touch. So the last thing you hear before you die would be the Macarena. I mean, that's, that feels like a fate worse than death to me. We've got um, the Russian Grozer here, a little sort of bullpup AKS 74U equivalent effectively. Not remarkable to see that in a video game, we've covered it before. The thing I've wanted to, put, to sort of talk about is that rather splendid homemade red dot sight which appears to be a can of sardines anchovies maybe they've put a bit of glass on it and for the red dot there is like a laser pointer complete with cute little laser radiation warning i don't know what class laser this is shining onto the glass to create your sight and i think for an improvised sight you'd be better off just duct taping the laser to the weapon and trying to zero that to it and using that as your sight, just you know, literally a laser sight, rather than trying to turn it into a red dot. But I admire the creativity and the concept and it's clearly a, a, a overarching theme of semi-improvised firearms, which is interesting in itself. Okay, being careful not to take out my uh, computer with this monster. Now this one has had quite a bit of it cut away. I don't know if you can see on camera, but this is a, a rare HK21E that has been cut away for instructional purposes. That's what this is. This is the HK21E. And it is this belt-fed machine gun version of the G3, is what this is. They've done a decent job with it. With the animation of this, it's just occurred to me that a lot of LMGs, or well, any MG that you're sort of ramboing, hit, hit firing, may not always show you the disintegrating links that hold the belt of ammunition together. So, what's holding these together? As the round is either pushed through or pulled out, fall away. And that's what we see tumbling out of the side of this gun here in quite an authentic fashion. And it's just occurred to me that some games, at least, will have overlooked the fact that we should be seeing links coming out of the gun. Maybe it's just that the, the graphics here are current generation and it's drawn my eye to it. Right, we've got an M14, specifically the SOCOM 16 version. An interesting choice in itself perhaps. More interesting is the muzzle attachment. It says it is a, uh, a resolver suppressor, so a sort of fabricated sound suppressor. It looks like the back part is an oil filter, 
but then what looks like clip to that is like a like a windshield wiper filler bottle thing this would work depending on your definition of the word work so oil filters will remove some decibels <laughs> from the report of a, of a shot bearing in mind this is a full power rifle so it's very loud to begin with the plastic component it's going to act as an expansion chamber to some degree it has a very large aperture at the end though so it's not going to be super effective if it is effective and you get a build up of pressure within that container the container is likely to split you know there's a reason why sound suppressors are not made out of soft plastic it's liable to split after one or two shots right so this thing in actual use is really quite interesting heating is definitely a problem for suppressors they are con because they're containing propellant gases that have that have not long come out of the very hot chamber and the increasingly hot barrel depending on how many shots you're firing they will retain heat but this is highly gamified so it getting hotter and becoming inefficient to the point of the gunshots no longer being suppressed i don't th think that could happen. Also, if it's heating up so much that it catches fire, uh, the barrel can, can glow red hot, white hot, and actually bend. And a bullet can even come out of the side of the barrel if it gets hot enough. So that level of heat, absolutely. What it can't do is put itself out. There's not a little miniature team of firemen, uh, firefighters, running down the barrel and putting out the, the, the flame. So you'd have to You'd have to quench this in some water or something, or just crack on and hope that the heat didn't become catastrophic for the whole weapon. But it's a very interesting twist, kind of at kind of the next level of video game improvised suppressors. It's quite interesting to see. Okay, one of my favorite firearms of all time, um, the AR-15. This is the M16A1, which is, I think, by a lot of popular consensus at this point, the best of the lot. This is possibly the best in-game model of one that I've seen so far. There's some really nice texture texturing on the handguards. Depending on when the actual rifle was made and what sort of a service life it's had, you get all sorts of interesting texture changes on these smooth slightly flimsy plastic hand guards and um, we've got it there. It looks like they have been, at, they're actually over painted. Interesting to see it's not just the improvised sound suppressors that are kind of heating up and catching fire. The commercial ones like this are as well, but they're heating up really quickly. So after not many shots, they're glowing bright red. It would take a lot more than that for, it, for this thing to glow, just because that, that's an indicator that the whole rifle is, is overheating. Quite an intriguing way to try and balance out the advantages of the sound suppressor. It makes you make careful use of it. This is one of the weirder things in the game. Not because it isn't a real gun, it is. So what we see here is a slightly weird thing in its own right, a, a revolving sporting shotgun that's then been turned sort of back into a revolver <laughs> pistol by simply chopping it down like you would saw off a shotgun normally. Now if this thing was around in fictional Cuba then you may well want to do that to make better use of it but you'd still be better off with a real revolver. Just being a shotgun doesn't make something super powerful. So I suppose the, the advantage here over a conventional revolver would be that so limited shots, but large capacity. Uh, so a, a handgun firing buckshot, if you can manage the thing, in theory would be worth having in this kind of improbable scenario that we find ourselves playing in. Not so much in any real world scenario. So a real thing that has been heavily rule of cooled. Oh, okay, insta pause. And for some reason, I haven't even taken in what the gun is yet, but I've seen the belt of cartridges feeding into it, and they all have dimpled primers. We see this in movies all the time, because inert rounds are usually, or are often, made from fired cases. It's interesting because games, of course, don't have to worry about economics of making inert rounds. They don't have to worry about safety at all. So that's just a mistake. They have modeled a fired round, 
Okay, the gun itself is the RPD, as some of you might have spotted. If you didn't, don't feel bad because it's missing its probably probably its most obvious recognition feature, which is that um, distinctive clamshell wooden handguard. That's not there. Instead, we've got some sort of a vertical foregrip, a pistol grip. I can't quite make out what it is. Almost looked AR-15 shaped. That's been clamped in place around the barrel. I, don't, I haven't seen an RPD missing its handguard and with a vertical foregrip, so I'm guessing that's meant to be some sort of an improvised modification in keeping with the delightful color scheme and the various other bells and whistles that we see attached to weapons in this game. The SVD makes yet another comeback. I am not at all surprised to see it in the game. An interesting point on these in the wild, as it were, when they're recovered from uh, conflict zones, where they are in use, they're in use with an optical sight. But if you didn't have access to the optical sight, what would you do? Well, I don't think it would be this. I think you would just rely on the iron sights. It's a lot more about the skill of the user and the inherent accuracy of the, of the weapon. You, know, you can't just slap a scope on something and magically become more accurate, as we see in pop culture. And you, what you definitely don't want to do is lash up, literally, a telescopic sight from some vaguely cylindrical found objects and lenses of some sort, and then draw on the reticle with a sharpie. That is not going to lend itself to any kind of precision. Even if you can get this thing to reliably shoot to point of aim at a given distance. It is not going to retain that ability for more than one shot. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to use the word batshit on this channel, but um, they can bleep it uh, if not. This is one of the worst ideas I, I think I've ever seen. I mean, practically speaking, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. You would end up with a charbroiled backside. What this should have, if you, I mean, I can't believe I'm even suggesting this. Please don't try and recreate this at home. Is some sort of a shield coming down off the back of it. I mean, you get away with that with um, jetpacks to, to an extent, where due to the way you're sort of holding yourself, you don't get scorched necessarily, but it looks to me like you're backside or your right foot, the way he's crouching down, would suffer some, some heat, at least um, discomfort, <laughs> shall we say. So what is this thing? Well, you tell me. It's some sort of rocket weapon. I'm guessing they're meant to be like Law's rockets or something, but they don't look like a Law rocket. And they've been mounted in some sort of a backpack frame triggered with some sort of electrical ignition. I've now realized that this thing has some sort of homing capability, so these are not just uh, dumb rockets. How are, I mean, I suppose passive infrared, if the, if the missiles have some sort of passive infrared seeker, you need some sort of a cue, be that an audio tone or a red light, something to show that this thing is ready to launch and is locked on. You're not getting any of that with the backpack launcher, it's just magically guiding itself onto the target quite effectively by the look of it. But I can absolutely see why they put this in the game because it really does change things up and it looks like it's a lot of fun. Okay, quite an exciting one this, the BP-2. Actually the VHS-2. For a moment I wondered if BP was some sort of play on Betamax but as the uh, age-old rival to VHS. I'm aging myself with this comment, I realise. Here is a real Croatian HS product, VHS 2. And it looks pretty good. It's got all of the right features. This thing has is unusual for a bullpup firearm in that it has an adjustable buttstock. Uh, normally with a, with a bullpup, because you don't have a conventional stock on it, you can't adjust for things like body armor, different body shapes. Um, they obviously wanted to build that in. How successful it will be remains unclear, but this has already become quite significant in the movie world, and it's now bleeding through into canes as well. Uh, so our version is the, is the K2, so it has the carbine length barrel, whereas the version in the game is the full length rifle barrel, but everything else about it is the same. Okay, so watching this thing in action, 
The rail on the top is different to what's fitted to our rifle. Now, I don't know this system well enough yet to know whether what's shown in the game is a correct rail or if they've got it wrong. But ours has backup sights built in to the rail, which means the view at the back of the gun is quite different to what we see here. Normally, of course, you'd want some sort of a sight on there. In this case, it has backup sights clamped to the rail itself instead. That's it's possible that's an option. They have got the, the reload correct, which is cool. So if we cock this with the magazine on, simulate it being empty, and then replace the magazine. And what he's doing there is reaching to the rear and pressing this catch to allow the bolt to go home. So they've done the homework on this. So yeah, I think one of the more accurate guns in the game in terms of depiction. Thanks very much for watching guys, we always appreciate it. That was the guns of Far Cry 6. Have a look in the description for links over to the Royal Armouries. We've got uh, social media stuff going on, uh, we've got our own YouTube channel, and of course we'll be back on GameSpot again next week. Thanks a lot.